Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be frying up a bacon skillet meal. Now I said meal because this is good at breakfast, lunch, dinner, just about any time of the day. It's quick it's easy and there are a lot of shortcuts you can take to make it even easier. Uh, what you need is about half pound of bacon and about half a dozen eggs. You need about a cup of cheddar cheese or some other kind of shredded cheese if you want. You need about a cup and a half of diced potatoes. Now you can use any kind of potatoes in this. You can use uh, fresh potatoes, you can use frozen potatoes or you can use these canned potatoes. And right now, because of the food shortages, the canned potatoes are actually a little more available than any other kind. And they do work fine in this. Just get the diced ones and it really saves a lot of time. They cook up quick and there's no prep with it. And I'm using a little diced onion and some salt and some pepper. Um, the onion and the bacon and the cheese are where this dish is going to get its flavor. If you want though, if you like things spicier, you can add um, some kind of hot sauce or hot peppers to it. You could add bell peppers to it or a lot of different things to give it more flavor. You could do some kind of Italian spices in it even. But I like it just kind of the basic simple recipe. And, you know, there's a lot to be said for cooking simple. The simple flavors, I, I just prefer them. But if you don't, if you want it spicier, it's really easy to make it spicier. Another shortcut you can do, other than the canned potatoes, is I cook a lot of bacon at one time in the oven. I'll bake it all at once, save the grease, put the bacon in a Ziploc bag and put it in the freezer, and then when I want to make something like this, I've already got the bacon cooked and that step is already done. If you can't get bacon, again, because of the food shortages, um, you can use these real bacon pieces in this because you are going to crumble the bacon up after it's cooked. You will need a little bit of butter or a little um, leftover bacon grease if you've got some saved in your refrigerator to fry everything up in if you use these little bacon pieces. But these will work in this recipe saves a ton of time and if you're cooking just for one person you know something like this makes it a lot easier a lot faster and a lot more affordable so these are definitely an option okay let's go over to the stove i've already got my skillet warming up on medium heat and um, i'm just going to put the bacon in the pan and fry it and the Bacon grease will give me the grease that I need to cook everything else in. And in fact, I may have to take some of the grease out. If there's too much, you know, you just take a little out. You're definitely going to have enough, though. You're not going to need anything else, any other fat. When you're cooking bacon in a skillet, um, it takes a whole lot longer than cooking it on the oven or in the oven, and it does tend to pop. Um, which can cause some pretty serious burns. But you want to start it in a warm skillet and you want to lay it out kind of flat in a single layer. And as it cooks down and shrinks up, you just keep adding your bacon to it and moving it around until you get all the bacon in your pan. I actually tried to film this video um, outside yesterday for y'all just for a change of scenery like everybody else in the world Brett and I are stuck at home and I'm filming this in 2020 so if you're watching it years from now there are food shortages that's why I talked about the canned potatoes and the bacon bits um, and we're all safer at home <laughs> not necessarily by choice but that's just the way life is right now. On the bright side, I'm getting all kinds of stuff done at home. I thought we would be traveling this year, but because we're at home, the yards never look better. The garden's really looking good because 
I'm here to take care of it. You know, it's not going without water or anything like that. So I guess there's a bright side to it. We've all got more time to take care of that stuff that needs done at home since we can't go anywhere. If you're frying bacon on top of the stove in a skillet, you do want to kind of keep the temperature adjusted because if the temperature is too hot, it not only will burn your bacon really fast, but the grease pops a lot more and having the temperature too hot increases your odds of getting those grease pop burns, which can be really, really bad. So keep an eye on the temperature to kind of keep the grease from popping so bad. While the bacon is um, cooking, I'm going to drain my potatoes. Now, if you're using these canned potatoes, you do want to make sure you drain them well. Uh, if you're using frozen ones, you want to make sure they are thawed out because if you put them in a pan frozen, not only will they pop in that grease and pop the hot grease all over you, but they'll also tend to be more soggy. Um, you want to make sure they're thawed and they are drained if there's any water on them. Okay, now that we finally got all of our bacon in the pan, we've been giving away some cookbooks, so let's do another cookbook giveaway. Uh, I have three winners for these cookbooks that I have not heard from yet, so if y'all would get me your address, I will get these mailed out, and I still have two more to give away after today. So if you still would like to get a cookbook, you can buy one on Amazon. Just go to Amazon and type in Hillbilly Kitchen Verses and Vittles, and it'll pop right up. If you want to win one of the last two cookbooks that we have to give away, in the comment section on any video on the channel, just leave Hillbilly Kitchen Verses and Vittles as part of your comment, and I'll search the channel comments, print all those comments off, and then draw the winner from those comments. Um, literally, we have had thousands of entries so far. Thank y'all so much. Um, your support and your excitement uh, really means a lot to me, and uh, it's very, very encouraging. And thank all of you who have, who have bought the cookbook. Um, we've sold a few thousand copies now, which is kind of amazing for somebody who is pretty much unknown. I mean, we don't have like a network program behind us or a publisher behind us. So that's really amazing. Thank all y'all very much who have purchased the cookbook. And like I said, if you still want to get one, they are available on Amazon. But this week's winner is Robin Widener. And um, if you will give me your address, Robin, I will get you the cookbook and I will post a link to your channel in the description of this video so that you know you're the right Robin. <laughs> if we were using um, bacon that was we had pre-cooked in the oven or even those little um, pre-cooked bacon pieces in this, this dish would already pretty much be done and I'm still frying bacon. So that's one of the main reasons why I bake my bacon, a whole bunch of it at one time. It just saves so much time when you're preparing meals, especially on a weeknight or something. Um, you might not have 30 minutes to stand here and fry bacon, but if you can have the whole meal ready in 15 minutes, you know, which you can, if you do the, if you have your bacon already cooked, literally like 15 minutes, and you could also use those little thin um, pre-cooked strips of bacon if you wanted to. But they're not usually very crispy, so I would throw them in the skillet and crisp them up a little bit if I was going to use them. And you do want to fry this until it's crispy because you're going to crumble this all up and add it back into the finished dish after everything else is cooked. This would make a really good Father's Day breakfast. It's coming up here in just a few days. Um, and maybe if you had some plans to go somewhere for the day to the lake or something, you could cook this up in the morning before you left. Or if you're 
able to find somewhere to go camping, this is a really good um, camp breakfast because it's all in one pan. You can cook it all up at one time and you can double or triple it and make a great big batch to feed a whole lot of people. If nothing else, maybe you can fix this for Dad for Father's Day and just hang out on the porch or in the backyard or hang out in the garage with him working on a project or something for Father's Day. As you're frying your bacon, you want to kind of keep it rotated. Um, pull the pieces that are kind of around the edge of the pan into the center and move the ones that are in the center out to the edge of the pan because the center of the pan is going to be hotter no matter what kind of skillet you're using and the pieces in the center are going to get done faster. Our bacon is about crisp now so we want to take it all out of the pan and drain it on something. Now you don't need to drain this real well because it is going back into the skillet but you do want to drain it a little. I mean you don't want it to sit there and get soggy while you're cooking everything else. Okay, be careful when you're adding your potatoes because the grease is going to pop. And I probably have more grease in here than what I want. Mm. Okay, I definitely have more grease in here than what I want. But I'm going to leave it all in here and let my potatoes kind of start to fry and brown. That way they all get coated really well in the grease. But before I add my eggs, I'm going to remove the extra grease out of here. You also want to get your onions in here, especially if you're using canned or frozen potatoes. Because um, the canned and the frozen potatoes will get done really fast and your onions won't be done if you don't get them in there pretty quick. Whenever I make something like this, um, especially if I take the time to fry the bacon in the pan, I like to scrape the bottom of the pan pretty good because little bits of that bacon are going to be down in the bottom of the pan and that's really going to give what you're cooking in the grease a lot more flavor. Now if I had pre-made the bacon in the oven or if I was using the bits or the little pre-cooked strips or something, that wouldn't really matter. You can see all the little brown bits on the potatoes. Those are actually all bacon that's coming up out of the bottom of the pan. I'm going to add a little bit of, of pepper to my potatoes. I'm not going to put any salt on them because I use those canned potatoes and the canned vegetables pretty much all have salt added to them. Sometimes you can find the no salt added, but right now you're lucky if you can find anything. So I'm just going to put a little pepper on here um, and I'm going to put a little salt and a little pepper in my eggs. And it is to taste. You can put salt and pepper on the table so everybody can kind of season it the way they want it. Um, and you can even save all the salt and pepper till the end if you want. You want to beat your eggs up so that they're kind of fluffy. Bust the yolks and whip them a little. How long you fry your potatoes is really kind of, it just depends on how you want them. Um, if you're doing fresh potatoes, it will take a little bit longer to cook them but the canned potatoes are pretty much cooked already. All you want to do is just crisp them up a little bit. Um, frozen potatoes, they'll cook really fast too. So you just kind of get them the color and the consistency that you want them. The fresh ones though, you want to cook them until they're tender. Once you get your potatoes cooked, until they're the way that you want them, then you want to kind of rake them all up on one side of your skillet. Uh, you don't need to take them out or anything like that. Kind of check and see how much grease you have left. If you have too much, you can just take a paper towel and clean some of it out. 
I've got a little bit more than what I want in my eggs, not too much. So I'm going to get just a tiny bit of that out of there. Um, you can pick this up and drain it, but you risk spilling it all. And if you're cooking in an iron skillet, an iron skillet is very heavy. You risk dropping it. And you definitely don't want to drop an iron skillet full of hot baking grease. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm just going to add my eggs now. You do want to give them just a little whisk before you put them in there if you've already whisked them up because all of your pepper will settle to the bottom of your bowl. Okay, now we're just going to kind of scramble our eggs up. And it doesn't matter if some of them get up under the potatoes a little bit because we're going to mix them all up together and any eggs that are up under the potatoes will just kind of mix in with them. But you do want to separate them so that it's not, so that you have scrambled eggs and potatoes, not just egg coated potatoes. All this stuff that you can see in the bottom of my pan is from where I fried the bacon. And if you had, if I had baked my bacon ahead of time and just used the saved baking grease, that wouldn't be in there. Now that is going to give this a lot richer flavor, but it's just kind of up to you, you know, if you want to take that time to fry the bacon in the pan. And it's also what do you have available. Okay, so when your eggs get almost set or a little bit before they get as done as you want them, go ahead and cut your heat off and mix your eggs and your potatoes in together. And there'll be plenty of heat left in this pan to finish setting them up and also in the stove eye. I heard, hear you laughing, Peggy. Peggy says it's called a stove burner. She never heard of stove eye <laughs> until she started watching my videos. Okay, now that you want to bust your bacon up, just break it up into pieces, crumble it up, and add it in here. And I suppose you could even put the strips back in here if you wanted to. And we're going to stir the bacon in so that it's all mixed in with the potatoes and the eggs. Alright, and the last step is just to top it with your cheese. Now, you don't even need to put a lid on this because there's plenty of heat here to melt this. You can put a lid on it if you want to, especially if you're waiting on everybody to crawl out of bed to eat or something, if you're out camping. Uh, you can, if you want to, put it in the oven and brown the cheese. Just pop it in the oven for, oh, well, prop, pop it under the broiler. Um, you could broil it in maybe three or four minutes just to brown the top. But that's just a personal preference if you want to do that. I usually don't. I just put the cheese on there and let it sit there and melt. And it'll melt in just a couple of minutes. And that's all there is to it. Now, if you make your bacon ahead of time or if you use the pre-cooked stuff, you can have this whole thing ready in 15 minutes um, if you're camping and you want a quick breakfast. If you, it's a weeknight and you're looking for a really simple, quick dinner that everybody will eat, this is a pretty good option. Um, I haven't seen too many people that don't like bacon and potatoes and eggs. <laughs> so, um, as far as anything to go with it, you might want to add, if you're doing it for a lunch or a dinner, maybe add some cherry tomatoes or something. At breakfast time, add a little fruit, some grapes, uh, half a grapefruit, something like that. This is just about one of the simplest one-pot dishes that you can make, especially if you're looking for a one-pot dish that everybody will eat. And, you know, you can add a little fruit or a little vegetables on the side. That way you don't have to worry about picky kids that won't eat some kind of a one pot dish or a casserole that you make that's got peas or corn or something in it. Seemed like, seems like I had a kid that 
would not eat a vegetable. I mean, there was at least one of them that wouldn't eat corn, at least one of them that wouldn't eat peas, at least one of them that wouldn't eat green beans. So anything I cooked where you added stuff into it, somebody wouldn't eat it. But this, they would all eat. And you can see our cheese is all melting and flowing down in there. We've got just a tiny little bit that's not. And it's just been sitting there melting with the heat that's in the skillet and in the rest of the food. Thank y'all so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. Give this one a try. It's really tasty and really easy. If you haven't already, please click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.